I'm trying to speak for all these idiots who actually follow you. You can do footages from my system as well as my camera and I hope you will check both of them and you will get the clarification. So you can check it. Assalamu alaikum guys I hope you are doing good and uh, I just okay <clears throat> I just want to share with you one incident just took place a couple of minutes ago that Hamare uh, Jo Sheikh Mufti Menk he was just uh, on live on Instagram where he uh, interacts with the followers and they get to face to face interaction with the Mufti sub and uh, he is giving us chance to talk to him greet him or ask whatever he, uh, people want to ask you can ask the questions as well and most of the scholars they don't do it and uh, I think this is I think only famous uh, scholar who is doing it so it's very good for us all that uh, some scholar who is very famous he is uh, interacting with us and uh, whenever you see i have seen most of the sessions of uh, mufti menk uh, online instagram sessions but uh, i felt like uh, it was very helpful in different ways and uh, uh, you get to know a lot of things and you get to know a lot of people and uh, he shares his experiences etc etc so it was the first time there was this girl from some place i don't know so she started bashing the mufti sahab and uh, she started abusing even she started uh, even she said that uh, the followers uh, who are watching you and following you are uh, idiots and i just want to say that uh, as soon as uh, people get to know religion or they start to practice the religion of islam or uh, they've been doing a lo lot of wrong things and then come back to the Islam, start praying, start doing these all kind of, all kind of stuff. They start uh, judging the people who are around them, who are not practicing. And they start judging the uh, like uh, scholars. They start uh, telling the sayings, telling the interpretation of ayat, telling the everything. And even they start telling the scholars. If you have, there are a lot of scholars around the world, thousand lakhs of scholars you can follow. And uh, the scholars have their issues. They have, they might have their, on their level of education, their knowledge, they have uh, kind of uh, conflicts between, but still they are together. We are as ummah, we have to stay together. So we cannot bash any scholar uh, however, we don't have any knowledge, we don't have anything, but still we are uh, saying like uh, uh, we have listened to your all the lectures, even I've been watching Mufti Sahib since last many years, most of these uh, lectures I won't say, uh, yeah, just I have uh, watched all the lectures, the girl was saying I have seen all the lectures, I have uh, seen you are uh, doing very wrong, you are misinterpreting, uh, giving the misinterpretation of Islam, and the Quran also and you are like a uh, lot of things about which is seriously not genuine which are all the allegations are wrong I just want to I condemn this uh, act nowadays is very common in Muslim communities and uh, I just want to let these youngsters know that uh, please whenever you start praying just hold your horses just start to listen as much as possible when you get to know a lot of things then you start saying something and don't ever bash any any sect any sect or scholar or the scholar of any sect uh, even on the other religions also we are not supposed to say anything so this is what happened on the uh, channel right now on uh, mufti menk uh, sheikh mufti menk's uh, instagram channel so and i just want to share with you one thing more that i'll be show uh, i just want to share one thing more uh, with you that uh, as soon as controversy started going on there were only like uh, 2200 view viewers who were watching the conversation of different people from different countries who were calling the mufti sahab and as soon as the controversy started thus people started to come on the channel as a, a wildfire literally there were around 5,000, over 5,000 
from 2200 to over 5000 people were watching i'll show you the video i'll show you the footage uh, which i have taken and mufti sahab has given very nicely good answer that uh, if you know something uh, anyways whatever mufti sahab uh, said you can uh, just watch by yourself i'll be sharing it with you and uh, inshallah i hope that it will be helpful for you all thank you so much assalamu alaikum as you can see i'm watching right now from the both side on my laptop and my phone that this girl is trying to bring down share and a lot of people have been uh, increasing right now as you can see it was only 22 hundred views people watching and now it's 4000 again
you know that I've studied the deen a lot. I have ijazah in Quran. I have ijazah in so many things which I don't you know need to say. You know who else? You know who else knows more than you? Iblis knows more than you, but yet he chose to be arrogant. Now, now look at how you're comparing me with Iblis. That goes to show a lot about the fact because that Because you're literally, you're literally bragging about your knowledge. You're out here telling me how much knowledge you know. You're, li no, you, I understand you know a lot, but guess what? You're literally mixing truth with falsehood, and you can't be doing that in Islam. Islam is not above that where you pick and choose what you want to follow. I can tell you that this is what I've studied. And what you're telling me is actually is, is, is nothing new to me because I'm used to a lot of hate and a lot of people who say things and that's the whole reason why because I'm Because you're literally you. contradicting everything Islam said. Remember when your video, you remember that radio video that got exposed? No, no, remember? Remember that video that got exposed of yours where you went to the radio station and you were supporting lgbtq community and everything there was literally videos allah does not expose those whom he loves completely balanced it, it is not warped as you say it is if you had it your way you would go out and kill everybody that was in front of you because that's the verse that you cited and the translation of it you said it so wrong so if according to you you're supposed to be walking out and killing everyone that is dangerous and this is why i said i fulfilled my duty unto allah to explain to you that you're you're thinking wrong you've been swooped you've been taken to the wrong direction come back to the straight path my sister and you know what i've done my duty unto allah and i'm excited about the opportunity to talk to you in front of allah i'm going to say i delivered the goods and i told the sister don't ever ever be a person who thinks that to spread islam you need to fight and abuse everyone hurt them and kill them if they don't agree with you because that is not islam may allah bless you and thank you so much for giving me such a lovely opportunity to talk to you Wow, that was a sister, and I'm sure you guys heard what they have said. So it was a very good chance. It's Ramadan, and sometimes, you know, uh, we have to say things. I actually saw her saying that, uh, I actually saw her saying that, uh, you know, don't take from Mufti Meng and so on. And I was quite keen on knowing why. And I thought maybe it might give us an opportunity to actually, uh, to actually, uh, correct her. May Allah bless her and forgive her and guide her to the straight path. You know, she's passionate about the deen. She says that uh, she's only recently started practicing and this is the problem I always fear. When people start practicing after a while, they become harsh and shaitan comes to them from a different way and they start listening to preachers who preach you to be hard. But sister, you took 30 years to come to the straight path. You want others to come to the path in three minutes? Come on, come on, come on. Where is the deed? Where is the character? Where is the, the, the goodness? No, I, I'm not I, I'm not hurt. I, it was my opportunity. I'm, a, I'm supposed to teach. So I seize the opportunity to actually teach. So people are saying, sorry, don't say sorry. Come on, if I, if I couldn't have reached out to her, who would have anyway? But to be honest with you, I did it. And, uh, and, I kept, and I kept going. I could have blocked her, deleted her, but I didn't. Because that's not what it is. We care for everyone. We care for her as well. We want her to come to the straight path, don't we? And so therefore, I ask all of you to pray for her. Because she is wrong and she thinks she's right. So what they do is, they take scholars and they pick little clips of what the scholars may have said. And they intentionally find a misunderstanding, a way to misconstrue it. And they start spreading it so that everyone says, this scholar is perhaps a scholar for dollar, like what I've heard, they're making money. And uh, sometimes they say this scholar is a deviant, don't listen to him, he's astray or she's astray, etc. Just because of one or two things that they may have said. So what you need to know, not one or two things they may have said, but in fact, one or two things that they have misunderstood. So I tell you what, uh, instead of that, we, we need to clarify it, but in a dignified way. This was very dignified according to me, the sister was okay. She, I'm glad she said what she wanted because it gave us an opportunity to hear her out. To a certain extent, she raised one issue. She said that I said the Quran was a book of history. And that's not what I said. So what she did is she's been brainwashed by people who said that I said that the Quran was a book of history. But that's not what I said. I said the Quran has in it historic facts, has in it history. It has in it the stories of the past and the uh, uh, creation of man and so on. Now, what is that? That's the accurate facts of history on one one part of it. The 
other parties' rules and regulations and the third party's prophecies of what's going to happen. And that makes up a lot of what the Quran is and so much more. Belief and whatever else, a lot of it. That's the Quran. It's the revelation of Allah. But they took one thing and they misinterpreted it purposely. Then they say that I said jihad is totally a thing of the past. And what's the meaning of jihad? What is it? So, mashallah, it's something amazing. A sister is asking what happened. I'm going to post this up later so that you can see what happened, inshallah. It was really, really beneficial, alhamdulillah. And I think uh, it's good to know the type of mentality that a lot of these people have. They quote their sheikhs and, you know, unfortunately, this is what's happening. That, you know, normally they're frustrated because of a lot of Muslims being killed across the globe, dying across the globe. We feel it. We all feel it. We feel the oppression. But they want to deal with it in a way that will create a bigger disaster than the disaster that's on the ground. And we're saying, be sane, be wise, be you know, a person who's got a bit of foresight, think about how you, we've got a problem, how are we going to solve this, you know? Am I going to solve it in a way that will create a bigger problem? If that's the case, there's not much I could do. And it's not the first time in history that this has happened. Anyway, my brothers and sisters, it was lovely talking to you guys, and it was amazing. Um, mashallah, tabarakallah. I pray for the sister. Honestly, we care for her. And the, the fact that she says, I used to listen to you and uh, most of what you say contradicts the Quran and the Sunnah. That's a lie. That's a lie. If I made a mistake and I really am open to correction, but whatever she said, that was wrong. Actually, I, I hadn't heard. She was the one and her sheikhs have heard in it. And another thing is when you're reading the Quran on your own and nobody's explained to you the context of the verses, even the Bible, the Christians who read the Bible without explanation of the context of the verses, they would be they would misconstrue misunderstand and they wouldn't even know the verses i mean the quran has verses in it that speak about uh alcohol having a certain element of benefit in it and so on abrogated and you don't know what abrogation is you don't know how the quran was revealed how are you going to learn so my brothers and sisters uh may allah bless you guys i've had a really really awesome uh time with you guys today I see we peaked today. Probably uh, the cumulative collection of all of you will be a lot. May Allah bless you guys. Thank you for your time. And inshallah, I look forward to seeing you guys again one of the days. So, barakallah feekum. Take care, guys. Uh, I hope Ramadan's going well. For me, it's going really, really well. One of the best Ramadans I've had. I'm glad I had an opportunity to speak to some uh, sister here who, who really was, uh, was speaking quite extreme. And we had an opportunity to talk to her and to actually uh, give her a little bit of advice and tell her that what she's doing, what she's thinking is wrong. And the verses she quoted, uh, actually the verse she quoted, I was expecting her to quote that verse because I know when people get excited in that way, that those are the verses they quote and they try to say, you guys don't care for the ummah. My sister, I want to tell you, I care for the ummah and humanity more than you. And I'm not blame, blowing my trumpet, I'm giving you facts. Because I care for the Ummah, that's why I'm speaking to them today. The thing is, you want the whole world to think like you, you. And that's why you're becoming violent, calling people idiots and saying that the devil knows more than you and so on and so forth. That's not the way. Don't belittle people. Respect them. They will listen to you when you show that you care for them. If you show that, if you don't show you care for them, what are they going to, what are they going to get from you? May Allah forgive you, my sister. So that was my closing remark for you, my beloved sister. May Allah bring you back on the straight path, the straight and narrow. It's a path of goodness, beauty, care, and reaching out to people and keep trying and give them da'wah and keep giving them da'wah. She said, by sitting and giving da'wah, you're going to get nothing. My sister, how could you say that? SubhanAllah. There are so many categories of giving da'wah. You know what? You have to learn to care for people. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So my brothers and sisters, that's my field. Meaning I've been, I've been uh, you know, initially many, many years ago, I used to speak a little bit hard to people simply because I came from a very small environment. I wasn't exposed to a lot of different types of people and the world was very different. But subhanAllah, uh, as I uh, traveled, as I expanded, as I met very, very good people, and guess what? They were not so practicing. And 
uh, to try and reach out to them how to do it. And if you are hard, they're going to go further away. Like the Quran says, They would go away. But if you're calm, if you're collected, if you show care, if you have leniency and so on, they will come and they are coming. That's what we need. So my brother, my sister, may Allah bless you guys. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. something you know my sister thank Allah that he has allowed you to grow in a beautiful way uh, and we're all I'm very I'm quite strict on myself but I tell you what we have to reach out to people who are not on our level and you know people who are not on your level not everyone thinks the same and not everyone is the same the whole world is different and to be able to empower people and reach out to them using a beautiful way and a method is part of the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ because it's, it's, if you look at how he spoke to various categories of people it was always different so subhanallah it's, it's amazing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has allowed us uh, different understandings to be able to reach out to others to bring them closer and closer to Allah. So uh, there are people who are right now who say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. They are Muslims. They 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 do believe in Allah and they are weak, weak in the sense that they haven't been able to practice okay. quite a lot of things sometimes. Okay, so let's put that aside. But would you you just hang on a second? So if we were to consider all of them totally astray, don't talk to them, don't even mix with them, don't even associate with them, don't even try with them, we would never get the da'wah across. I've been to churches, I've been to synagogues, I've been to places to call people towards Allah in a beautiful way. I've spoken to the practicing, I've spoken to the non-practicing without judging them. They are out there already and I've tried to speak to them just the iqamat al-hujjah alayhim so that they can have had the message at least once in a beautiful calm way so there are people already on Instagram already doing so many different things and so on and uh, we have to learn to care for everyone that doesn't mean we agree with them we have to learn to reach out to them that doesn't mean we agree with them so if there are people who have strict rules within themselves that we're never asking them to compromise those strict rules but we're trying to reach out to those who don't have uh, rules at all and who haven't even got to the bare minimum and who haven't even got to the bare minimum and who haven't even got to the bare minimum and who haven't even got to the bare minimum and who haven't even got to the bare minimum So many systems. I, I, it's not like I mean, if you knew, maybe I'm a guy who doesn't practice. I'm a guy who enjoys the fame. I'm a guy who perhaps. And yet, if you, if I were to just turn my camera now and show you just my little room here, you probably would be shocked. But my sister, it's okay. I I, I really don't mind. You know, on on. I think a lot of people have just taken things out of context. I I firmly believe if I have done something that is blatantly out of Quran and Sunnah, then. Something that is blatantly something that is blatantly something that is blatantly out of Quran and Sunnah then obviously been practicing since I was a kid so I didn't have the problem of not being practicing and then coming back but I find that a lot of people when they were not practicing when they come to practice sometimes they become so harsh and hard that they look at others who who are not practicing and think that you know these people are Jahannamis and they don't have a chance they don't stand a chance so we become very hard in that and I think uh, that is a disservice. I mean, I don't mind being attacked. I don't have the time to read what people say about me. I, I, I'm busy with that. Just today, I've been recording things. 
17 different programs, events, lectures, Qur'ani presentations, plus my own readings. I'm so tired. My throat is blocking a lot. I, and and I, just, I still have to leave my parents in Tarawih this evening. And I'm trying to complete the Qur'an as often as I can. I'm trying to do so much for myself. But all of that, and I'm still making the time to reach out to people, because to empower people at a time of hardship, when others can seize the opportunity to do this, others will seize the opportunity to do this and pull them towards dalal. You rather have a good message. I don't need to. I don't need to do anything right now besides empowering people to prove to them that you know. Actually, what you actually, from the evidence that everyone has, you're putting everyone back to sleep. You're saying the Quran is a history book. The Quran is no history book. We're supposed to look at the Quran. Can I talk? You, I think you had enough time to talk. Let, you're. Shutting me, you're trying to change the topic so I don't speak the hub. It has the news and prophecies of what's going to happen in the future. It has rules and regulations of what we should be doing now. And it has things of the past of history recorded in it. It doesn't mean it's a history book. So when you word it in such a blasphemous way to say, Mufti makes it the Quran is a history book, those people should see it. have the time. I don't have the time to actually respond sometimes to that because I'm busy working. When I die, Allah will then take it to take care of it because I never ever would dare say that. Why would I just learn a simple history? And, and this is the thing, like some people say, Mufti thinks that the art is not applicable. That's a joke, that's a lie. But there are rules, regulations, there are rules, regulations, just like Salah. I cannot just face anywhere, do anything at any time, and do what I want and say, that's my Salah. You have extreme people who just want to go out, abuse, hurt, harm, and kill people at will, and they use verses of the Quran to justify it. And what I'm saying is, that's not the way, because what, what, what you need to know is their rules, times? their regulations, their conditions. Definitely, their definitely, a hundred percent. You can't just pull out a gun and start shooting everywhere. However, you can't be just sitting at home. You can't, if you're going to speak about Dean, you can't be sitting at home and just like run your mouth 24-7. You, you have to actually, we, we have to see action. What about the 3,000? What about the 3,000 3, Muslims who died last year because of Trump and um, uh, Russia and Syria and the army? They killed 3,000 people, but these are the things you don't see in the news because of the sect of sheikhs like yourself. You come on and blabber, but we see no action. I want to tell you something. This is not being emotional. I'm trying to. I'm trying to speak for all these idiots who actually follow you. Like I don't get why people follow you when there's. I didn't call you an idiot. I you speak so much respect, but I disagree. And I, I believe I can teach you. I believe I can make you understand if you are willing to listen. Because you're calling people idiots, it already shows you have no respect for other human beings who may be better than you today or tomorrow. And you're calling them idiots. So the first thing you need to correct about yourself is when you're talking to those you disagree with, learn to respect them. They were created by Allah. They were created by Allah, my beloved sister. Look at me calling you my beloved sister. And I disagree with some of what you said. So what I'm trying to say is don't That's just idiots. one of There is literally, if someone listens to you, Allah, I'm telling you, let me tell you this. If this was me like five years ago, this would have been my dream coming on live with you. However, I've watched your lectures. Every single lecture, I've watched it. And at first, I was really confused. And I was like, subhanAllah, I've, I've watched, okay, I've watched most of it. That's true. That may not be true, but I've, I've watched, I've watched, well, I've watched about 90% of your lectures. 
pictures. I would literally keep up with everything you posted all the time. And then eventually, when I started reading the Quran, half of the stuff you said contradicted, it contradicted what Islam and Sharia had taught. Let me tell you this. You know, the Jal, when the Jal comes, he... The ja let me tell you this when the jail comes he may he mixes truth with the with that which is going to make matters even worse so you want to solve the problems we we all know there are problems we all know what we're facing but how to resolve it we we may differ so you might want to resolve it in a way that would create a bigger disaster than the disaster that is there and perhaps i might want to resolve it in a way okay the, what about the verse of the quran what about the verse of the quran that allah says fight them until there's no fitna in the dunya you can't just be sitting at home and giving dawah like this this is not the way to go there's the actions that we have to take back in the days the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam didn't sit back at home he went to wrong my sister your interpretation of that verse is totally wrong giving that and yours is right ever, don't ever undermine the giving da'wah in a positive way people are coming to the deen because of efforts of people who speak to them with respect not the deen was never ever spread by the gun or the sword and perhaps that's what you think and you know what go and learn the context of the verses that you are citing because you've never learned context you are just simply listening to people who are brainwashing you to believe that the verses of war means you must just take them and apply them anywhere on earth so anyway i've told you my piece it's a dose inshallah that you can hear today i must say that i love you peace be with allah i'm sorry if you, you don't love me back. Listen, that's fine you yeah, you you're literally the only reason people are showing you so much love is because they don't know anything about the quran and sunnah and you're mixing truth with falsehood you're literally mixing truth with falsehood i have given you what you need to hear and allah will ask me and i will say i gave it to you you know that i've studied the deen a lot i have ijazah in quran i have ijazah in so many things which i don't you know need to who say. else but you know who else knows more than you at least knows more than you but yet he chose to be arrogant now, now look at how you're comparing me with Iblis. That goes to show a lot about the fact because that you're literally, you're literally bragging about your knowledge. You're out here telling me how much knowledge you know. You're, you, I understand you know a lot, but guess what? You're literally mixing truth with falsehood, and you can't be doing that in Islam. Islam is not above it where you pick and choose what you want to follow. I'm trying to tell you that this is what I've studied, and what you're telling me is actually is is, is nothing new to me because I am used to a lot of hate and a lot of. People who say things, and that's the whole reason why. Because I'm you're literally contradicting everything Islam said. Remember when your video? You remember that radio video that got exposed? No, no. Remember, remember that video that got exposed of yours, where you went to the radio station and you were supporting LGBTQ community and everything. It was literally videos. Allah does not expose those whom He loves. Completely balanced. It, it is not warped as you say it is. If you had it your way, you would go out and kill everybody that was in front of you because that's the verse that you cited and the translation of it, you said it so wrong. So if according to you, you're supposed to be walking out and killing everyone, that is dangerous. And this is why I said I fulfilled my duty unto Allah to explain to you that you're you're thinking wrong you've been swooped you've been taken to the wrong direction come back to the straight path my sister and you know what i've done my duty unto allah and i'm excited about the opportunity to talk to you in front of allah i'm going to say i delivered the goods and i told the sister don't ever ever be a person who thinks that to spread islam you need to fight and abuse everyone hurt them and kill them if they don't agree with you because that is not islam may allah bless you and thank you so much for giving me such a lovely opportunity to talk to you Wow, that was a sister, and I'm sure you guys heard what they said. So it was a very good chance. It's Ramadan, and sometimes, you know, uh, we have to say things. I actually saw her saying that, uh, I actually saw her saying that, uh, you know, don't take from Mufti Mink and so on, and I was quite keen on knowing why, and I thought maybe it might give us an opportunity to actually, uh, to actually, uh, correct her. May Allah bless her and forgive her and guide her to the straight path.
you know, she's passionate about the dean. She says that uh, she's only recently started practicing. And this is the problem I always fear. When people start practicing after a while, they become harsh. And shaitan comes to them from a different way. And they start listening to preachers who preach you to be hard. But sister, you took 30 years to come to the straight path. You want others to come to the path in three minutes? Come on, come on, come on. Where is the dean? Where is the character? Where is the, the, the goodness? No, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not hurt. I, it was my opportunity. I'm, a, I'm supposed to teach, so I seize the opportunity to actually teach. So people are saying, sorry, don't say sorry. Come on, if I, if I couldn't have reached out to her, who would have anyway? But to be honest with you, I did it. And, uh, and, I kept, and I kept going. I could have blocked her, deleted her, but I didn't because that's not what it is. We care for everyone. We care for her as well. We want her to come to the straight path, don't we? And so therefore, I ask all of you to pray for her because she is wrong and she thinks she's right. So what they do is they take scholars and they pick little clips of what the scholars may have said and they intentionally find a misunderstanding, a way to misconstrue it and they start spreading it so that everyone says this scholar is perhaps a scholar for dollar, like what I've heard, they're making money. And uh, sometimes they say this scholar is a deviant, don't listen to him, he's astray or she's astray, etc. Just because of one or two things that they may have said. So what you need to know, not one or two things they may have said, but in fact one or two things that they have misunderstood. So I tell you what, uh, instead of that, we, we need to clarify it, but in a dignified way. This was very dignified, according to me. The sister was okay. She, I'm glad she said what she wanted because it gave us an opportunity to hear her out. To a certain extent, she raised one issue. She said that I said the Quran was a book of history, and that's not what I said. So what she did is she's been brainwashed by people who said that I said that the Quran was a book of history, but that's not what I said. I said the Quran has in it historic facts. It has in it history. It has in it the stories of the past and the uh, uh, creation of man and so on. Now, what is that? That's the accurate facts of history on one, one part of it. The other part is rules and regulations and the third part is prophecies of what's going to happen and that makes up a lot of what the Qur'an is and so much more. Belief and whatever else, a lot of it, that's the Qur'an, it's the revelation of Allah. But they took one thing and they misinterpreted purposely. Then they say that I said jihad is totally a thing of the past and what's the meaning of jihad and what is it? So mashallah is something amazing. A sister is asking what happened. I'm going to post this up later so that you can see what happened inshallah. It was really, really beneficial, alhamdulillah. And I think uh, it's good to know the type of mentality that a lot of these people have. They quote their sheikhs and, you know, unfortunately, this is what's happening. And then, you know, normally they are frustrated because of a lot of Muslims being killed across the globe, dying across the globe. We feel it. We all feel it. We feel the oppression. But they want to deal with it in a way that will create a bigger disaster than the disaster that's on the ground. And we're saying, be sane, be wise, be, you know, a person who's got a bit of foresight. Think about how you, we've got a problem. How are we going to solve this? You know, am I going to solve it in a way that will create a bigger problem? If that's the case, there's not much I could do. And it's not the first time in history that this has happened. Anyway, my brothers and sisters, it was lovely talking to you guys and it was amazing. Um... MashaAllah, tabarakallah. I pray for the sister. Honestly, we care for her. And the, the fact that she says, I used to listen to you and uh, most of what you say contradicts the Quran and the Sunnah. That's a lie. That's a lie. If I've made a mistake and I really am open to correction, but whatever she said, that was wrong. Actually, I, I hadn't heard. She was the one and her sheikhs have heard in it. And another thing is, when you're reading the Quran on your own and nobody's explained to you the context of the verses, even the Bible, the Christians will read the Bible.